So in this video, I'm actually going to change the buttons on my Pocket Go. So I've actually already made a start. Um, this thing actually took a while for me to open. So what I've done first, I've got my screwdriver here. I've taken all of the four screwdrivers out. As you can see, there's four either side. I've just got them all in here, um, all four of them. Make sure you put the screws to a side if you're doing this. Um, you don't want to lose them or anything like that. And then what I had to do is I had to use two of these plastic tools. And I actually had to go around the edge of this thing and just unclip it. Now the clip's in there are very strong. I don't know if this is because it was the first time, but it was actually quite hard to unclip all of these. So yeah, you've just got to go on the edges and unclip all of them. Luckily, I didn't break anything. And yeah, this is now unclipped. So we can put that to the side and this is what it looks like at the back. So it has a battery, but there's actually two screws we need to remove. Now you can disconnect the battery if you want to. And um, the battery is actually plugged in right here. So if you wish to dis disconnect that, you can actually go ahead and do it. Um, I'm just gonna leave it in, probably not advised, but um, it's entirely up to what you do so I'm just going to go and take these screws out as I said there is one right here which we're going to take out first so there you go there's that screw taken out now it might be different than the screws at the back so make sure you put that to the side and do not lose it there is also a screw down here which is under the battery a tiny bit or well, it's not really under it it's just kind of touching it a bit um, take that out make sure you do not damage the battery and uh, this is a lithium battery so yeah it could explode and catch on fire but um, there you go, so that is out the way as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, another thing to um, keep in mind, I would recommend taking the SD card out. Now, you don't have to, um, but it's probably just a good idea, just in case it gets stuck or anything. Um, also, the shoulder buttons, make sure you keep those to the side, and the power button as well. The power button on this thing is very tiny, so make sure you look after that and don't lose it. And there you go, that's what it should be looking like. Pretty basic, pretty simple, and um, we just have to lift the motherboard out. Now, it will actually come out of the screen, and it's kind of attached to the speaker as well. Now, the power button has also come out, so make sure you do not lose that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We can rest it just like that, and it should be okay. So what we're actually going to do now is we're going to add in the new buttons. So right here, I've just got a picture of the um, normal SNES controller, and we're basically just going to copy this. So what I'm going to do is just basically just copy the layout of how this goes. So we have got, um, which round does it go? So we've got B here, we've got A here, and then we've got Y and we've got X. I don't think it matters too much if you get them wrong, um, but obviously we're just going to copy the layout anyway. So let's just take this one out. Uh, you can pretty much just try and grab them out, I think. There you go, so that one was, which one was that? I just took out Y, this one was Y, so we need to put the green one in there. So there you go, that's Y, now we can do X next, which is the blue one. So there you go, we've got X in there. And then we've also got um, A and B of course, so A is the red one, so we can do that. And then we've got the yellow one last. So there you go. They are all of the buttons. Pretty simple just to add in. Um, they do actually have notches on them, but I can't really see where the notches would go. I think it's just where they've cut them out of the mold or something. But yeah, that should be okay. So what we can do now is we can actually reassemble it back together. So the pad should stay in there as well. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to tilt everything, making sure the screen goes in place, being very careful not to touch it as well, and we can just rest everything like that. Now the power button as well, we want to make sure that we put that in. I think this whole grey bit actually comes out to make it a bit easier. But yeah, we can put everything like that in. The power button will just rest in there like that, and this grey bit just clips over them so... So there you go, oh, it's kind of annoying to put this in actually, and the button just fell out. So I'm probably going to have to set up that button again. It's a bit annoying to actually put that in, but you basically just kind of like put, put it down like that, put it through the gaps. Let me just sort out the button. Okay guys, so that is now done. That was kind of tricky actually. Now all we have to do is put those motherboard screws back in. So just find both of them. I'm just going to put the battery one in first, because that was the way um, I actually took it apart. And then we just have the other um, screw which holds in the motherboard. That just goes in down here. Make sure you do not put it in the wrong place. Um, both of them are just opposite the battery. So let's just screw this one in as well. 
Okay, so that is that in. And now all we have to do is put on the left and right buttons. We've also got the power button. And then of course, we've just got the back. So let's put on the left button. It actually goes on the left, surprisingly enough. <laughs> and then we've got the right button as well, which obviously goes on the right. I nearly did it wrong. And then we have the power button, um, which is very small. Also, these buttons can fall out. So you might have to like prop it up at an angle a bit just so they don't keep on falling out because it's a bit annoying. Um, but they do. I've actually got something to prop this up on. Um, there you go. The USB charger it comes with. Perfect. And then we've got the button button just sits in like that very similar um, to the Game Boy buttons and then of course we have the back so the back will just clip on now I haven't tried this yet it might be take a few tries to clip this on right but we're gonna try we're gonna line it up oh is that it does it just clip on like that okay I think I got away with just um, putting it back in so now all we can do is put the four screws back in at the back now be a bit careful with these you don't want to like do them up like all the way or anything just put them in like one at a time okay so there you go it's back together now let's go and put the SD card in I can check I've got the buttons all right and um, they should actually be right so let's just put this in there you go swap it around now it's a bit dusty um, I don't even have a cloth here but never mind it's, it looks a bit dusty but there you go we've got the buttons they will click check every single button even start and select because they can fall out check left and right um, check the volume button as well I should swap the volume scroll wheel and check the power button last of all does it turn on or have I completely broken it let's have a look and there you go boots up perfectly fine so that is how you replace the buttons on your pocket go I would recommend disconnecting the battery it's entirely up to you to be honest um, can be risky depends how careful you are so that's pretty much it that is how you replace your buttons obviously we can check if they work um, so we can go into Game Boy uh, Legends of Zelda. I'm pretty sure I got it right. Let's just check real quick if I just turn my phone now. So there you go. Exactly lined up. And yeah, that's pretty much it. How you replace your buttons. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.